we should know what we're singing. <laughs> right? I mean, Bengali is not my native language and I don't think it is yours either. Right? <laughs> so, but we should know what it means. Then uh, we can enter into the spirit of the thing. Srila Prabhupada wrote in the foreword to the Vaishnava song book many years ago, Achutananda, Achutananda Swami at the time, he put together the song book, Vaishnava song book. It was interesting how it came about because Prabhupada had left him behind in India Two devotees, Prabhupada left. He left a few others. He had taken about 30 devotees with him and he went touring India, conquering India. He was conquering because he had left there penniless, come to the West, and now he was coming back with his dancing white elephants, as he referred to the devotees. <laughs> and. Uh, Many places they went, all the major cities, they were received really wonderfully. Sometimes the whole town came out to greet them. In one town in particular, one city, Sura, the description is you can be found in Jamuna Devi's book. And she gives the description, it's just, it takes your breath away. The whole city came out. Every day, they would go on Harinam and people would come out with garlands, hundreds of garlands, and they would put garlands on each of the devotees in the Sankirtan party. They really appreciated what is the Sankirtan movement. And they would put so many garlands on the, the devotees that after a while, their garlands were falling on their shoulders and they would take them and Throwing people would go mad after them, uh, like <coughs> shower. And they would, show, they would, ladies would go up on the rooftop and shower flower petals down to the devotees. And every corner they would do, someone would come with an arti tray and do arti to the Sankirtan party. Such was their appreciation of Srila Prabhupada and his Sankirtan movement. So it was uh, wonderful. So what is this Aikatan? What is this Harinam? So, in this song, Prabhupada said that, oh, I was telling you how he wrote in the forward, that these songs are, they're not ordinary. They're not cinema songs. <laughs> they are written by pure Anuloid devotees and they are sharing their heart. And he said that when these songs are chanted by devotees who are practicing the proper Vaishnava behavior, means they're following. He said then it has great spiritual benefit to awaken dormant, the dormant love for Krishna that is within our hearts. Because it is not an artificial thing. It is said in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhya Kabunoi Shavanadi Shuddha Chitta Korele Kodoi. It is Nitya Siddha, it is always existing. Just like the soul is Nitya, always existing, Krishna is always existing, the love of Krishna is always existing. But now it's covered over. But by Shavanadi Shukriti, by pure chanting, like we were doing, that can reawaken, can awaken us from our golden slumbers. <laughs> we are like sleepwalking. <laughs> we think we are awake, but we're really asleep to reality. What is reality? Krishna Leela and everything else that is going on in this world of samsara 
that is insignificant. This is not so important. So, Prabhupada had sent the Chutananda to one of his god brothers, Ma, Sri Maharaj, in Navadri, to stay there. And it was there that he learned all these songs. Because they would sing them at, at, the, at that temple every day. And he recorded, he himself personally recorded the songs after he had learned them. And they made two cassettes. It was put, put out on the Golden Avatar label. Somewhere around 1970 or 71. <laughs> This was in the case of cassettes. And uh, they were distributed around the world to all the temples. And he also put together a song book containing those songs. And Prabhupada wrote the foreword to the song, to the song book, saying that, that there are many more songs besides these. It's true. And what we see in our song book, that is only a drop. Bhaktivinoda Thakur alone wrote several books of songs. He was so prolific. And he was a big family man. <laughs> he had ten children. And he had a regular job. He was a high court magistrate. Which at the time was the highest position an Indian could occupy during the British rule. And so doing that, raising 10 children, still he found time to write hundreds of songs for us. <laughs> he wrote, they wrote him, Narutam Das, Taku, and others. Prabhupada said they, they wrote these songs for ordinary people. Well, we are ordinary people. <laughs> But it's such a nice way to get the philosophy because they've woven the, the Siddhanta, the conclusions of the Vedas, into their songs. And just like ordinary people singing them, they're, they're getting knowledge along with in such a nice way. So it's, um, it's a beautiful gift. Yeah, I, I like to say it's one of the matchless gifts of Srila Prabhupada. He's given many things, his books, temples, farm communities, so many things. And he also gave us these songs to sing. And he, as he said, they will, they're very helpful to us, helpful in our chanting. We can enter into the proper mood of chanting our japa and kirtan and everything. This is the culture of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Narutam Das Thakur in this song, he laments. He laments. And his lamentation is, we should know it. Prabhupada said, lamentation means purification. We are lamenting like Narutam. Not lamenting for material things that we had and lost. But Narutam is saying, My Lord, Hari Hari people in Janamakwa, I've wasted my life. I've wasted my life. He said, I, I, I got this human form of life which is very rare. Dula, Sudula. It is very, very rare. And it has a purpose. It is not without purpose. It was meant for worshipping Radha and Krishna. Really. Uh, human life is meant for worshipping Radha and Krishna. He said, so I got this opportunity, but I didn't do that. And therefore, he said, knowingly, I, I'm drinking poison. <laughs> and Janiya Shuniya Bisha Kainu drinking poison. So if we don't take the Krishna consciousness, we are, we are committing suicide, knowing that we are drinking poison. The poison of sense gratification, worldliness, materialism. 
Now that is a 99.9% of the people of the world are engaged like this. But there is great hope with the Sankirtan movement of Lord Chaitanya. Prophet came alone, one person. Look what he has done. Look what he has done. Of course, we shouldn't take it lightly. What he did was not ordinary. <laughs> In his song, Krishna Tabakunya Habibai, Prabhupada prayed to Krishna on the ship, on the boat, Jaladuta, begging for Krishna Shakti. Because without Krishna Shakti, you cannot do what you can. Krishna Shakti Bina Nahi Tara Prabhupada. Chaitanya Charitamrita tells us, Without Krishna Shakti, no one could spread Krishna consciousness. If Prabhupada understood this, and therefore he prayed, he begged Krishna to please give me the Shakti so that I can fulfill my Guru Maharaj's order. He ordered me to go to the West and treat. I feel so incompetent. I, you know, this is like an impossible task. It was an open secret. I mean, everybody knew, everybody in Bhaktisiddhanta's mission knew that this is what he wanted. The Prophet is the one that took it to heart, seriously. And he came to the West, and the rest is history, as they say. So Narutam says, I am um, knowingly and 